Malagan. Good morning everyone, my name is Isaac. I'm a Bunjalung and Wiradjuri man. And today I want to acknowledge the local elders past and present and emerging. And today we gather on the land of the Gadigal people of the Yoruba Nation. So today I just want to acknowledge all my brothers and sisters here today, Aboriginal and Torres Strait, and also non-Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander as well. And today we ask the spirits to help us and guide us to have fun today. Hi everyone, my name is Hayley. We are so excited to be here today. We are here to share a little bit of our culture with you. We are going to do that through so many fun things today. We're going to show you some of the artifacts behind me. And then we're going to have a look at Aboriginal art symbols where you will get to use these symbols to create your journey stones. So we have a lot planned. We're gonna look at some Australian animals and how they move, and then we're gonna to get to play a few games. So I hope that you're all excited, but to start our session off today, we are going to do a ceremony called a sweeping ceremony. So if I could invite any captains that are free to come on up. Come on up, captains. And we are going to do a ceremony called a sweeping ceremony. Now what we do is we use the gum leaves because they absorb water. Now, we sweep down your captains and Isaac and myself and we cleanse our bodies so we get rid of all of the bad energy and we invite all of the good energy in to start our morning off to be really happy and fun. So let's get started. Awesome. So if the captains could just stand with their bodies like this and once I've swept down the front, or Isaac has, if you could just turn around and sweep down too. So if all of my friends that are watching, if they could just maybe um, sit in silence just to show respect during the ceremony, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. So as you can see, I'm sweeping down the body and then I'm shaking all of the bad energy off to the side. So as you can see, I'm sweeping the body with the gum leaves and then I'm shaking that bad energy off to the side. Thank you. Fantastic. So that ceremony, once again, is called a sweeping ceremony, and it's to cleanse our body of all of the bad energy, shaking it off to the side and inviting all of the good energy into our bodies, starting us off the day. So that concludes our ceremony, but what we're going to do again is invite our captains up, and we're going to start by doing a face paint up. So I'm going to paint up the girls, and Isaac is going to paint up the boys. And while we're painting up, we will explain to you what those face markings mean. Okay, perfect. So what we're going to do is we have five dots along the face. So let's see if we can all count together. One, two, three, four, five. Fantastic. So what this represents, can anyone try and have a guess? Let's have a look. So if you've guessed water or a wave or a river, you are right. So that represents water. So if all of the captains that are girls were standing in a big circle and they were painted up, do you think that the water would flow or would the water stop? So I think that the water would keep flowing if all the girls were in a circle. That represents infinite wisdom and infinite knowledge. So that's me passing on my cultural knowledge and wisdom, and it's continuing to be shared along the group. So let's finish painting up the girls. Fantastic. 
Fantastic. Awesome. So now with the boys, we're just going to go a line across the nose, which represents respect. So respect for your elders, respect for yourself and all of your friends and family, and respect to all of your belongings. Awesome. So if you're not sure what an elder means, an elder is someone who is older than you that helps guide you and teach you through life. So it doesn't just have to be a grandparent. It could be a sister. It could be your captains that are here today. Or it could be a friend or an auntie or an uncle. So if you don't remember what an elder is, just remember it might be someone that you hold close to your heart that helps teach you and guide you and someone that is older than you. Perfect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get Isaac to paint me up quickly yeah. and then I'm going to paint up Isaac. Fantastic. So that's our paint up for today. And now what we're going to do, we're going to say goodbye to our captains for a little while. And then we're going to have a look at some of the cool things behind me. So let's all say bye to our captains. Thanks, bye. guys. Bye. Thank you for joining us. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to have a look at the cool things behind me. And I'm going to start off by showing you a woman's item. Now, actually, you know what? Let's change that up because we're going to take these things off. And I think we might talk about these first. So let's have a little look and see if you can guess what it could be. So this here is kangaroo skin. And before you ask me, yes, it's real kangaroo skin. So kangaroo skin has lots of different uses. Today, the kangaroo skin was used in ceremony as a ceremonial cloak. So this is my ceremonial cloak that I wear when I visit lots of friends. And this today was worn with the fur facing away from my body. The reason I wore it like that today was the skin facing towards my body keeps me nice and cool because if I had the fur touching my body, I would get so hot and sweaty. Now, the other cool thing is if it was raining outside and it was a cold day and I had the fur touching my body, keeping me nice and warm, if the rain was to come, this side of the kangaroo skin is waterproof, which means if the water or the rain was to run on, it would glide straight off, keeping you nice and warm underneath. Now, sometimes on ceremonial cloaks, you can have a little bit of a story about who you are. So that way, if somebody else was to look at your ceremonial cloak, they could get to know a little bit about you. So I've got Isaac over here, and he's going to share with us what he might put on his ceremonial cloak. Now, to put your story on your ceremonial cloak, you could use a traditional paint called ochre, or maybe you could even put some burn markings into it. So I, if you can see these two digging sticks, they've got some, there we go, they've got some burn markings in it. So you could burn your story into the kangaroo skin, or you could use traditional paint called ochre, which is made from clay. Now, if you did use ochre, it just wouldn't last very long. It would slowly wash away. However, the burn markings would stay on forever. So Isaac can share with us a little bit about his story and what he would put on his ceremonial cloak. Awesome. So everyone can see here how I've got two kangaroo skins together. So on one side, so on this side here, I would have for my mother's side. So my mother's tribe is Bunjalung, which is just in Tweed Heads, just outside of Queensland. So the Bunjalung totem animal 
is a big dolphin for the men. So over here, I have a big dolphin drawn in or maybe carved in. And underneath, I would have all my family members, so my mom, my little brother, my uncles and aunties, and all my little cousins. And on this side here, on this kangaroo skin, I would have for my father's tribe, which is the Wiradjuri clan. So the Wiradjuri totem animal is a big guga, which is a big goanna, a big lizard. So underneath, I would have my family members, so my dad and my other aunties, uncles and cousins as well. Thank you so much for sharing, Isaac. So what else do you think kangaroo skin could be used for? Let's have a little think. I'm going to give you a clue. So if you get, got it right, we can use kangaroo skin for clothing. So just like T-shirts or pants or shorts or jumpers to cover our body to keep us warm, you can use kangaroo skin the same way. Now, kangaroo skin was also used as blankets, which would feel so soft. And it's also used to wrap babies up when they sleep. So has anyone ever seen their brother or their sister or niece or nephew wrapped up like a little burrito really snug. So picture a baby wrapped inside kangaroo skin. So they're nice and warm and cosy. They're wrapped inside and then they're placed inside something. And I want you to say it with me. Can we all say, call them on? Cool them cool on. on. Fantastic. So a baby is wrapped in the kangaroo skin and then they're placed inside a coolamon to have a sleep. Now the coolamon is a multi-purpose wooden bowl and the reason it's a really good spot for a baby to sleep is because when you pop it down, you can rock it but it's also a good spot to sleep because it's made of wood. When it's really hot outside, the wood stays nice and cool. And then if it's really cold outside, they stay nice and warm inside the coolamon. So there were no cots and there was no bassinets. So this was what we used. We used kangaroo skin to wrap the baby up like a little burrito. And then they were placed inside the coolamon to sleep. Now, I did mention that a coolamon is a multi-purpose wooden bowl, and that means that this bowl has lots of different uses. So, we've spoken about how the coolamon is a special spot for babies to sleep, but the coolamon is also used in ceremony. So, if you have a look at this coolamon here and this one here, inside is something called ochre, which I spoke to you about before. So ochre is traditional paint made from rocks of clay. So in ceremony, we use the ochre in a paint up. So we paint up our bodies and we use this also for very lots of different things. Not in ceremonies, we could use it for paint ups. We could use it to decorate our kangaroo skin. So they, this is used also in a ceremony called a smoking ceremony. Now, I did ask your captains a little bit earlier if some of our friends here today have watched a video of myself, Isaac and Uncle Stu out in country, and they told me that most of you guys have. So in that video, you would have seen us make this coolamon from a tree. So if you can remember, we carved it off a tree or together, and now we use it when we do a paint up. And over here, we've got a coolamon that has been used in a ceremony called a smoking ceremony. And once again, in that video that you watched, we used this coolamon in the smoking ceremony that we performed all together. So a coolamon is mostly used by women. It can be used to collect fruit and nuts, to carry water and to prepare food. So coolamons are really awesome tools. You carve it from a tree and then you can use it for so many different things. Now Isaac is going to take us now to a men's tool and he will share that with you. Awesome. So right now we're going to pick up this right here. So this here is called a stone axe, and it's made from a stone and a branch from a tree. But they would also use something else to make it stick together. So they would use a few things. They would use tree sap. They would use ochre. They would also use beeswax 
And I would also use the animal poo. It's pretty disgusting, isn't it? So what they would do is they would grab their coolamons and their digging sticks. They'd put everything inside of the coolamon, then they'd mash it all together, they'd mix it all together with the digging stick. They'd add a little bit of water to make it a bit more moisture. Then they'd grab it, then they'd slap it on the stone and the, the branch. And once it's all uh, slapped on, they might place it over the fire for a bit to burn it, put in water to cool down, and this would last them hundreds and hundreds of years. So this stone axe here looks, looks brand new, doesn't it? So what would you use a stone axe for? So a stone axe could be used for hunting, and it could also be used for carving out a coolamon, as you've seen on the video of Haley and I and Uncle Stu. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that. So the next thing I'm going to show you is something that I think that you all would have seen before. Let's take a look. So if you know what it is, I want you to call it out. Do any of our, our friends here today know? Boomerang. boomerang! Amazing. So this is a boomerang. Now, friends, do you think that this is used for adults or children? What do we think? Probably adults. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that you might be wrong. What? <gasps> yeah, it's used by kids and Ooh. it's used for fun and for games. So this is the comeback boomerang and you, it's used for fun. You throw it and it comes back to you. But when you're catching a plain boomerang, do you think that you should catch it like this? Have a look. What do you guys think? So let's pretend that we're in the bush and we all made brand new boomerangs. So all the edges and the sides are super sharp. And for it to come back to you, you have to throw it with a lot of power. So if it's coming back to you and you catch it like this, what's going to happen to your fingers? Yeah, it might not fingers. just might hurt. hurt. It could actually chop them off and they could end up on the ground. Ah! <laughs> That would really hurt. So the safe way to catch a plain boomerang is with flat hands. So can everyone get their crocodile hands out? That's it. Great work. And on the count of three, we're going to hear a big clap. One, two, three. <gasps> Did you hear that sound? That sound tells me that you know how to catch a plain boomerang safely because you're using flat hands. Let's try that one more time. One, two, three. Amazing. So whenever you're using a plain boomerang, you need to make sure you use flat hands. And a good way to remember that is to be a crocodile. Now, the next boomerang we have Isaac can share with us yep. is called a... Does anyone know, friends? We're not sure. Is it a hunting Amazing. It is a hunting boomerang. Now, hunting boomerangs, are they used by adults or by children? Kids. All the kids hunt. <laughs> what a trickster. I definitely don't think that children would be hunting animals. What do you think, Isaac? Yeah, so a lot of the adults were the hunters. So with the hunting boomerangs, they'd usually go hunting with the boomerangs and this object right here. So this object right here is called a bundy stick. So once you go hunting for your emus or your kangaroos, you'd want to throw the hunting boomerang at the animal. But with, when you're hunting with the hunting boomerang, you'd want to throw the, the boomerang at the animal's legs so it can't run away. So if it hits their body, it might bounce off and it might just shake it off and they would either run away or attack you. So you grab your hunting boomerang, you throw it at the legs, take them out, they can't run anywhere. And obviously the animal's going to be in a lot of pain. So we don't want the animal to feel too much pain or die in pain. So then we run over to it with the bundy stick. You'd run over to it, pop it on the head and put it to sleep. So just like sometimes when you have to go and have an operation, you get given a special medicine and that medicine puts you to sleep. So then you don't feel the pain in the operation. You just wake up and it's all done with. So just like that, we use the bundy stick to put the animal to sleep so they don't feel the pain when we're hunting the animal. Now, I know that sometimes people get a little bit squirmish and they think, why are you hunting animals? 
you know, but that's just part of life. Way back, there was no Coles, there was no Baker's Delight, there was no Audi, there was no Kmart or Target. We had to use the earth to survive. So in order to do that, we needed to use animals to survive. We've spoken today how we can use the animal skin for clothing, for warmth, uh, to wrap babies, but then we can also use the animals for food. So just like we have our chicken and whatnot, we can use the animals to survive by eating it. And then what could we use the bones for, Isaac? We could also use the bones for some of the weapons. So just trying to find, here it is. So this artifact right here, is called a Woomera. So a Woomera is also known as a spear thrower. So I'm just going to grab a digging stick and let's pretend this here is a spear. You place the Woomera over your shoulder, you grab your digging stick or your spear and can everyone see this very sharp piece right here on the tip of the And what Woomera? do you think that could be? What did I say before? What could we use the bones for? So this here is a part of the animal bone. So you tie it up, the bone to the piece of the wood. You grab your spear, and then you stick your spear inside of the bone so it's stuck. You place it over your shoulder, and you'd go hunting for your animal. You would launch the spear thrower, and then the spear would go twice as further as what it would with your hand. So has anyone been to a park before with with a, like a dog park, and they used this toy to scoop the ball up, and they would throw the ball, and it would go a lot further. So they would have got that idea from the Woomera. Fantastic. So as you can see, even though we need to use the earth to survive, we never waste any part of the animal. We use the animal for eating, we use the animal for warmth, and we also use the bones for tools. So the next thing we're going to look at here is dilly bag. a dilly bag. Can everyone say dilly bag? Dilly bag. Amazing. So this is a dilly bag. Do you think it's used by men or women mostly? Hmm. Women. Yes. So this is used by women to collect fruit, nuts, berries, maybe even when they go in the ocean to collect some fish. Now, what, how do you think we would wear it? I'm going to give you a few clues. So option one, what do you think? Or option two? What do you think? Two. Two, that's right. And do you know why? Because I have both of my hands free, which means I can go collect my berries, my nuts, and I have my hands free. But also, if I was collecting berries and nuts and fruit, would my bag be heavy or light? Heavy. Very heavy. So if I had the heavy bag on my shoulder and I was walking around for quite some time collecting my food, it might keep slipping off. Or it would be so heavy that, oh, my shoulder would get so sore. So the reason that we wear it up here is not only because we have our hands free, but it's also because our necks are so strong and so sturdy that it can hold the weight of my food. So what is the name of this? Does anyone remember? Dilly, dilly bag. bag, amazing. So dilly bags are made from plant fibres. So we were at a school yesterday and we saw a plant called the lamandra. Now the lamandra is a plant that has a really long leaf on it and you dry out the leaf, you weave it together and it becomes a dilly bag. So if you have a look up close at this, Can you see all of those weaves? That keeps it nice and strong. So I'm sure some of my friends might be, might be here today wearing a plait in their hair. So they might have some braids. Actually, we've got Isaac over here with some braids in his hair. So if you have a look at the braids, see how all of the hair is twisted together? Just like this dilly bag. That keeps it all strong together and all in one place. 
And if you have a look, this is not going anywhere unless you really pull it apart. So just like this dilly bag, you could have it full of things and it would not break. It's very, very strong and sturdy. So you can use plants such as the lamandra plant to twist it all together, to weave it all together. Fantastic. So Isaac's going to show us another item. Now you may have heard these be used this morning. What are those? These here are called clap sticks. Sticks are used mostly by the woman when we go through ceremonies. They could be used for an instrument, like a musical instrument. They could also be used for digging as well in the ground. Fantastic. So as you can see, you can put designs on them. Over here, we've got some beautiful artwork. And whereas the ones that Isaac had were quite plain. Yes, yeah, so there's one here I left plain. And you could also have some burnt designs on them. Everyone can see these here. Awesome. Fantastic. So what we might do now is I did just show you some designs on these digging sticks. And what we might do is we might move on to some Aboriginal art symbols. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the board across to me and then we're going to do some art symbols. Now with these art symbols, once we have spoken about them, we can then make our journey stones. So we're going to use the paint and our little sticks to create some Aboriginal art symbols on our journey stones. So I'm going to do a few symbols and then Isaac is going to actually do a story for us using different art symbols. So can everyone see this board over here? Amazing. I'm going to pop on this side. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to draw up some symbols and then if you know what it is, I want you to call it out to your friends that might be in your room with you. Are you ready? So this symbol has quite a few different meanings. It can be a meeting place, it can be a campfire, or it could be a water hole. Now, the next symbol we're going to look at, this represents a person. Now, if I was to put mm, a spear next to it, what then would it represent? So let's have a little think. So if it's got a spear, I think that that might be a men's item. So would that make that a man? What do you think, captains? Yeah, I think a man. Fantastic. Now, what about this? If I did a person symbol, but then put a coolamon, what would that represent? A baby. A woman, fantastic. Because as I said earlier, the Kulamon is a multi-purpose wooden bowl and it's primarily used by women. So this would represent a woman. Now let's have a look at some animal tracks. Now over here... I'm going to give you a clue. Are you ready? Kangaroo. <gasps> Amazing. That represents a kangaroo. Okay, are you ready? Emu. emu. <gasps> you guessed that too fast. That represents an emu. Now, I think you're going to be able to guess this one without me doing any actions. What do you think? Wombat? Oh, I thought you were going to guess it, but they didn't. It's a D. 
Let's dingo. say it again, a dingo. dingo. Fantastic. So that is a dingo. Now, the next one I have here. This is not an animal track. Let's see if you know what it is. Do you need a clue? Yeah. Rain. rain. It represents rain. Now, the next one we've got. Now, I found one of these in the garden the other day. What do you think it could be? Widgety grub. <gasps> a widgety grub. Fantastic. So, let's try again. What is this one? Let's start from the beginning. Meeting place or Meeting water place, hole? Meeting place, water hole or campsite? Person, man, woman, kangaroo, emu, dingo, rain, widgety grub. Fantastic. So I'm going to get Isaac to come and join us now. He will do a few more symbols and then he's going to wipe this all out and he's going to tell us a little bit of a story using Aboriginal art symbols. Awesome. So, some more symbols we could add as well is we could have this symbol here. This is a bit of a tricky one. So, this animal track here, they live in the tree, starts with a P, and you see them at night all a lot. Possum? So, yeah, possum tracks. This one's an easy one. What do you reckon that is? Water? Like a river? Oh, this or? here is an animal. Oh, it's a snake. Yeah, snakes. So, if we have another animal here, it's got a snake body, but it also has some claws. Goanna? Yeah, the goanna. So, the Rajri word for a goanna is a guga. Can everyone say guga for me? Guga. Yeah, so we've got the goanna, we've got the snake, and we've got some possums. Awesome. So, now I'm just going to rub, rub everything off. We're going to make our own little story. Using these symbols. Awesome. So we might start off with some, with a big meeting place right here. And there might be some hunters in this meeting place. We've got a lot of hunters here, and there might be another meeting place down here. So we've got two groups, two hunters. And there might be a river in between these hunters and these, these groups. So this here is a billabong or a waterhole. You know, there might be some animals near that, that waterhole as well. So we've got some kangaroos. Got some emus. Maybe some dingoes as well. And these hunters they end up seeing, they, they, they uh, spot these animals here. So they quickly run over to the animals and they start hunting for their food. You know, while the men are hunting for their food, there could be a lot of women down here underneath a tree collecting some berries collecting some fruit inside the tree. You know, and on this tree, there might be some witchetty grubs as well. So there you go. Here's our own little story here. So we've got two families, two hunters, and there's a big water river here. There's a big riverbed. And there's a lot of animals along the river. And these hunters end up seeing these animals. So they end up going hunting for them. And while these fellas are hunting, the women go into the bush and grab some berries or some fruit for the men back home. 
Thank you so much for sharing this story with us, Isaac. That was really special. So what we're going to do now, friends, is we're going to use Aboriginal art symbols and we're going to use these symbols painting them onto our journey stones. Now, I know that sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to paint symbols that represent different things. So if you're finding it a little bit hard, that's okay. You can paint whatever you like on these journey stones. And these are your special journey stones to hold on to. And if you're ever feeling like you need some comfort, you've got your journey stone there and you'll remember this really fun day that we're having together. So on this journey stone, I have got a kangaroo track. And then Isaac on the other journey stone has a meeting place, a campfire or a water hole. So you can use the stick to create circles or you can use it as a normal paintbrush to create Aboriginal art symbols on your two special journey stones. So whenever you're ready, you can get started on that or you can do it a little bit later once we're finished here. So I'm just going to pop this out of the way now and I am going to get Isaac ready because Isaac has a really, really special story to share with us. So you might want to sit tight, make sure you've got your listening ears on because this is really awesome and this is one of my favourite parts of the day. So Isaac's going to come across now and he's going to share a very special story about the oldest musical instrument in the world. Awesome. So, I've got a tricky question for everyone. What do we think the name of this instrument here is? So, what do we think the name of this is? Uh, Yudiki. Oh, so that's right there. So, a lot of people would have said didgeridoo. And everyone all over the world knows this instrument as a didgeridoo, correct? Yeah. So, yeah. didgeridoo is the Western name for it. That's the name that Captain Cook gave it when he came to Australia. So he heard one of the Aboriginal people playing this instrument and he could hear the words didgeridoo, didgeridoo and that's why he called it a didgeridoo. So this instrument, the, tradi the traditional name for it, the real name for this instrument is called a yadaki. Can everyone say yadaki for me? Yadaki. Awesome. So I'm going to tell you all a story on how the yadaki got its name and how it came to be. So there was an Aboriginal man and this man's name was yadaki and he was a hunter for his family. So one day, Yadaki's family asked him, can you go into the bush and get some dinner for us? So Yadaki says, yep, no problems. So he picks up his weapons, he picks up his spears, his big spear throwers, his warmers, and his big hunting boomerangs. But when he left home, he noticed the sun was going down, it was getting very late, and it was getting very cold. So in order to warm up, Yadaki climbed up one of the trees in the bush, he broke all the branches off, placed it on the floor, and he made a fire. And while the fire was burning up and getting really warm, Yadaki picked his weapons up and started hunting all of his food. So he came back with his kangaroos and his emus, his snakes, his big gugars, his goannas. He started cooking up all of his food. But while his food was cooking, he could hear this really weird noise in the fire. So he got pretty nervous. So he grabbed his kangaroo skin, took it off, put it over the fire, put the fire out, he picked up one of the branches and he dusted all the smoke and all the dirt off and he looked inside to see what was making the noise. When he looked inside, he seen all these little tiny bugs and these bugs are called termites. So termites are little tiny bugs and they look like ants and they love to eat wood. So on a very hot day, after the termites have gathered all of their food, they'd want to get out of the sun and look for shade to eat their food. And luckily termites love to eat wood, so they'd climb up on the branch, they would dig themselves in, they would make the branch hollow. So everyone can see how this branch here is hollow. So that's where all the termites would have eaten. They would have eaten all inside of that branch to make it hollow. And can everyone see as well on this Yadaki how there's little dark spots all over it? Maybe we can zoom into that. So very closely, there's some little uh, little dark spots all over it. Oh, here's one right here next to my finger. So there's all these little dark spots all over it. Here's a big one here. Yeah, awesome. So that's where they would have dug themselves in. 
eaten all inside of the branch and that's home for the next couple of years for him. So Yadaki seen all these termites inside of the branch so, and he felt really bad for them because he put them in a fire a minute ago. So he picked it up, he tried to blow them all out. But when he blew into it, he made a weird noise. So Yudaki got a shock and he was thinking, whoa, what was that noise? Because he's never heard this noise before in his life and no one else has made this noise. He's never heard it before. So he picked his food up, put it over his shoulder, picked up his weapons and the big branch that he found and he went back home to see if his family knew what the noise was. And not one person knew what it was, not his uncles, not his aunties, not his little cousins, not any of the other hunters. So the next morning, Yadaki and his uncles and his hunters were still curious about what the, what, the, what the noise was and how it came to be. So they went into the bush with their hunting boomerangs and they started tapping on all of the trees that would walk past. Can everyone hear that noise? It sounds hollow inside, doesn't it? It sounds empty. So that's the reason why they tap on the trees with the boomerangs. They tap on it, they'll try and hear the noise. If it was hollow inside, then they would know that termites would have eaten all, all inside of the branch. And they would also see all these termites crawling on the branch. They might see them on the floor as well. And they could also see all these little termite holes inside of the branch. So then they would climb up the tree, they would break all the branches off. And that's how the Yadaki got its name. It's a pretty cool story, isn't it? Do you want me to play a bit for you? Yeah. Yes, please. Awesome. So while I was playing, I was making some Australian animal noises. Can we name some animal noises that you've heard? Kookaburra. Yeah, some kookaburras laughing in the tree. You've also heard some kangaroos jumping around. Maybe some emus calling out. Isaac, do you think that you could share those animal noises again so we yeah, can sure. hear them nice and clearly? So, so maybe one at a time? Yeah, so the kangaroos don't really make that much noise, so I'm just making the sound of the kangaroo jumping around. Everyone can hear that? Yeah. And now we're going to do the kookaburra. Now we're going to do the emu. So an emu makes a really loud yelling noise, like a... I'll show you. This is the noise an emu would make. much for sharing that. Now, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? How do you play this musical instrument? Can everyone play it? Okay, so I'm going to start off with, can everyone play it? So, only men are allowed to play. The only men are allowed to play the Yadaki because they believe when Yadaki passed away, his spirit went inside of all the Yadakis because he's the one who found the instrument. And because Yadaki is the person who found the instrument, that makes it a men's instrument. So traditionally, only men would know about men's instrument and men's uh, business falls under, uh, like sacred men's business. So only men would know about men's stuff and only women would learn or know about women's stuff. So to be able to, so they believe when Yadaki passed away, his spirit went aside of all the Yadakis and if a woman's spirit all started playing the Yadaki, Yadaki's spirit would wake up and would be thinking like, wait a minute, why is a woman playing a men's instrument? So 
So Yadaki would curse the woman and give them very, very bad luck. So to be able to play, you have to do something with the lips, so like calling a raspberry. And to be able to play for a very long time, you have to do something that's called circular breathing, which is breathing out of your mouth and in your nose at the exact same time. It's very, very tricky. Maybe we can try give that a go. I can tell you something. I do not know how to do it. So I started playing when I was about eight, nine years old. And I got circular breathing down when I was about 10, 11. So it took me about maybe roughly two years to be able to play. So I'm 19 at the moment. So it took, I can, I can play for a very long time now. So it's just a lot of years of practice. And I could play for about roughly half an hour, maybe half an hour long. So just like Isaac mentioned before, how it's a men's instrument, and if a woman was to play or to touch it, they get some bad luck. Well, that happened to me, didn't it, Isaac? <laughs> a few weeks ago, we were teaching some children, and we went to leave, and sorry, firstly, in the ceremony at the very start, we were doing the ceremony and I needed to pass something to Isaac. So as I've gone to pass it to him, he had his hands full. So just my normal natural self went to grab something out of his hands so I could help him. I touched the Yadaki after he played it. And he quickly pulled it back and I went, oh no, I forgot. I shouldn't have touched that, especially after he played. Anyway, so we're at the school for a few hours. We're teaching the children. I go to leave. Everyone's in their car. Go to turn my car on. Doesn't turn on. And we were, I was about an hour and 20 minutes away from home. And I went, oh my goodness, what has happened? Something's wrong with my car. And Isaac pops his head out of the window of his car and he goes, that's for touching the Yadaki. <laughs> <laughs> so I got some bad luck and the even funnier thing is once I got um, Isaac to jump start the car, I went straight to the mechanic and I said, look, I think something's wrong with my battery. I probably need a new one. He tested the battery. He said, nothing's wrong with your battery. It's completely fine. You're wasting your money if we put a new one in your car. It's fine. Did you leave anything on? I said, no, I haven't left anything on in my car. I got to work, turned my car off, went to teach the children, came back and it was off. So that is the truth, that if you touch the Yadaki, uh, as a woman, especially after a man has played it, you sometimes will get a little bit of bad luck. So that's just a little bit of a story time. Now, what we're going to do now is um, we are going to do some animal dance movements. So just like the few animals that you heard just then on the Yadaki, we're going to practice them. Now, I know we, we're going to show you two ways to do it. So we're going to show you how we can do it sitting down in our beds. Then we're going to get our um, friends to come up with us and we're going to do some dancing as well. So we will show some movements and then, captains, if we could play a quick game of musical statues with the Yadaki. So when the music starts and friends that are um, also watching, you can also join along, please. And you can join in and we're going to be the different animals. So I'm going to show you quickly how we can be a kangaroo. And typically, I know if everyone says, well, what does a kangaroo do? You do this. Is that right? Now, I'm going to show you something else. So, they're very still. I have a little bit of a scratch. They don't really move too fast unless they're feeling threatened or intimidated. Maybe you want to wiggle your shoulders around, scratch your nose, get your ears out. And then if you were to move. So let's go practice that in a chair. Are we ready? A little scratch of the nose. Fantastic. So the next one I'm going to show you is an emu. Now, Isaac, the boys and the girls do yeah. different things, don't they? That's right. So the girls' emus. 
put one hand on their elbow and one hand up. Now, we're not moving around like this. We're going to move around. We're going to be very strong and straight and sturdy. And if we are able to move around the room, we use really long, wide legs. And we move our arm with our body. Now, we might want to collect some berries. And now Isaac can show us what the boys do. And with the boys, one hand in the air and one hand behind your backs. So everyone knows Amy's got big, nice, long, strong legs and a straight back as well. So you're going to take long steps. Maybe you want to get some berries on the ground. You want to swap your arms around. Fantastic. So this is what the girls do. And then this is what the boys do. Now let's practice that in our chairs. Mmm, they were some nice berries. Fantastic. Now, Isaac, what other Australian animals should we share? Awesome. So now we're going to go with the echidna. Oh, fantastic. So the echidna, as everyone knows, has their spikes on their backs. So let's make some spikes. Are you ready? Yes. So we're going to place it on top of our heads. So and nice, we'll... straight hands. And the echidnas have very short, stubby legs, and then they're not very fast. So we're going to bend down like we're sitting in a chair. And we're going to go, we're going to do little walks. And while we're walking, we're just swaying to left and right. So very slowly, very small steps, making sure our spikes are there. Awesome. Fantastic. Now let's do that sitting down. So remember to get your spikes ready on your forehead and we're going to move side to side, nice and slowly. And this is what an echidna does. Awesome. Amazing. So what we might do, if it's okay with you, we yep. are going to listen to the Yadaki and we are going to be the Australian animals that we've learnt about today. When the music stops, we need to freeze. But you can freeze as your animal. So if you're the echidna, you might want to go. If you're a kangaroo, you might need to do. And if you're an emu, you might need to. Okay, so if I could have my captains to come up, whoever would like to join in, and let's play a game of musical statues. All right, who's ready? So you can, how about we start off by being an emu? Amazing. So do we all remember how to do it? Amazing. Great work, friends. The next song they're going to do is an echidna. Do you think we can do that? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's become a kangaroo. Wow. We are really good at this game. 
I can see some kangaroos. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Good job. Let's give our captains a clap. Thank you. Amazing. That was so much fun. Fantastic. So what we're going to do now is if our captains would like to join in from your chairs, you can do so. And all of my friends that are joining me today, you can join in too. So the next thing we're going to do is play a game called Sasar. Can everyone say that? Sasar! Sasar! Amazing. So Sasar is a game from where my family is from. My nan was born and raised on an island called Thursday Island in the Torres Strait. So this is a game of focus and concentration. It's about being still and it's about being a hunter. So we're going to pretend that we're all hunters. We've got our hunting boomerangs, which look like this. And we've got maybe our spears too. So, this game, we're going to do a little scenario. We are hunters. We've got our hunting boomerang, we've got our spears, and we're out hunting for a... Kangaroo. Kangaroo, fantastic. We're out hunting for a kangaroo. So when we're hunting for a kangaroo, if we quickly ran up to the kangaroo to quickly hunt it, what do you think might happen, captains? Probably, probably jump away. It might run away, but if it's feeling threatened, what else might happen? Get on its back tail and kick us. It might attack us. We don't want that to happen. So when we are hunting for animals, we need to be in stealth mode, which means we need to be still, quiet. We need to have focus and concentration. So. This game, when we say Sasar, you need to say it out loud and do a freeze. You need to stay frozen until I start the next round of the game. This might sound a little bit confusing, but Isaac and myself are going to show you how to do it now. Are you ready? Sasar! And then you stay frozen until I start the next round. So let's see if all of our captains and my friends that are watching today can join in. Are you ready? Let's do a few practice ones. Sasa! So stay frozen, friends. No moving, no wiggling the fingers. Great work. Sasa! Do I see some of my friends moving? They're blinking, they're blinking! <laughs> Sasa! What do you think, Isaac? How's everyone doing? Oh, they're doing pretty good. All right, this round is super speed. Are you ready? Sasa! Super speed! Sasa! Okay, the next round is slow motion. Sasa! Wow, everyone is so still. Let's do another slow motion. Are you ready? Yes. 
さー Fantastic now we're going to do a normal one but I want to hear a really loud さーさー Are you ready? Let's do it! One more really happy loud one. Are you ready? <laughs> We're going to end it with a silent round. So when you say sasa, you need to mime it like this. Did anyone hear anything? No, because I was miming it. So when you do your legs, it needs to be silent. I'm sure that you can't hear that, can you? No way. So silent legs, silent mouths. Let's do it. We did it the first round. That is amazing. Let's try one more time. Great work, everyone. Let's give you a clap. Oh, good job. Thank you so much for joining in with me. I love that game. Now, the reason that game is a game of focus and concentration is because we were hunting the animal. Do you think that we achieved that? I think so. I think we got the animal, guys, because we didn't move. The animal didn't feel threatened or intimidated, and it didn't attack us. So high five. Great work. Okay, so the next thing, what we're going to end on today is we are going to grab a beautiful painting out. Isn't it gorgeous? Isaac is going to explain the story behind the painting. And then when we're finished here today, we're going to have your captains coming around and you're going to be adding some white dots. So all of my friends here are going to contribute to this and then it's going to be placed in a really special area. And every time you see that picture, you can point to your dot and say, I did that dot on that painting and I helped create that. So Isaac, do you mind sharing with us sure. what this story is about? No problem. So this story here is just about... The journey of life. So at the top here, we got the sunset or the sunrise. Underneath it, we got, does anyone remember these symbols here? I think that that could be a person. Yeah, could yeah. be a person. And obviously, as you can see, there's a big person here and there's a little person underneath. So that would mean the big person would be an elder. So maybe your mums or your dads. And underneath could be you. So yeah, we've got the sunrise or the sunset. We've got some people here. Underneath that, we've got the wind. And we've got some footsteps or some foot tracks. And underneath, we've got some water holes. We've got some billabongs there. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. So I really hope that you have enjoyed today. We have had so much fun sharing our culture with you. And I really hope that you can add to this a little bit later on today or tomorrow or next week, whenever you've got time. And that way you've got a little bit of us left with you here today too. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we can come back soon and we can do maybe a different program with you, maybe some more artwork because I would love to come back and see some of your beautiful faces. So thank you so much for having us. Thank you, captains, thank for everything you, you have done today. And we will see you again soon. Yano! Yeah,